Welcome to part 11 of this Davon Data Tutorial Series, a Python crash course. The topic of this video is list comprehensions. You can think of list comprehensions as a more compact way of writing your for loops. Generally speaking, it's considered more Pythonic to use list comprehensions instead of for loops when they're appropriate. This makes list comprehensions a fundamental Python skill. As always, please follow along with this video by typing the code that I type. Don't hesitate to pause or rewind the video if needed. You learn Python by writing Python. So I'm once again in the Control Flow Jupyter Notebook. This will be the last section that we're going to be using this Jupyter Notebook, so be sure to save your work at the end of the video if you're following along. So I'm going to go ahead and set up some markdown here, and I'm going to do hashtag hashtag list comprehensions. Run that. So as I mentioned in the intro, you can think of a list comprehension as a type of for loop, a more compact version of the for loop syntax. And it's considered good programming practice in Python to use list comprehensions when they make sense. So build a new list from an existing list. I'm gonna create a list here that has the numbers one, two, three, four, and five. Super exciting, I know. And I'm gonna create a new list <laughs> using a list comprehension. Okay, so a list comprehension uses square brackets, which is nice because it aligns conceptually to how you declare lists. So I got my square brackets. And the way I like to think about list comprehensions, especially when you're new to them, is to think of them in terms of for loops. So for example, let's go ahead and say, hey, for every value in my list. And we saw this syntax previously in the for loops video. And this works just fine. Now where list comprehensions are great is that in front of the for, you can actually define some work to be done. So for example, value times value. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, hey, look, Python, I've got this object called my list, which is a list. And for each value contained in there, go ahead and create the square. So one times one, two times two, so on and so forth. And then that will create a brand new list. And I want you to assign that to the variable name new underscore list. So I'm gonna create a new object called new list, which is nothing more than all of these numbers squared. And of course I can just do new list. And if I run this, you get exactly what you would expect, the squares of all the numbers. So this is the base idea. We've got a for loop, and then we've got some work in front of the for that we want to have done. Now moving on, list comprehensions are cool because they also support filtering logic as well. So you can use filters. So let's say that I have my list. I'm gonna overwrite the my list object with a new one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a range of numbers from one to 100. So I'm gonna use a range object here, ranging from one to 101. Because remember, range objects do not include the closing number. And I can make this into a list by using the list class, just like so. And what I'll get is a list that contains the numbers one through 100, so I can just double check that for you real quick. So here you can see, and let's scroll back up here. Now what we can do is we can create a new list. And once again, we're gonna do a list comprehension. So this time let's show something different. So for number in my list, notice I can name this thing here, anything I want, number, value, x, foo, whatever I want. So for every value, every number, every thing in the my list list, do something. And what I'm gonna do is, once again, I'm just going to square stuff because why not? So this is the work to be done. And now I can also use some filtering logic and I can say, hey, only do the stuff in this list comprehension, only do the work for the numbers, oops, if number less than or equal to 50. So go through the entire collection of values in my list. And if the current value that I'm looking at in my list happens to be less than or equal to 50, only then do the work and then add it to the brand new list that's being created. So what I will get is just the squares of the numbers from one to 50 inclusive. So if I run this, you know, let's print this because it looks a little bit nicer. And if I run this, notice I get exactly what you expect. 50 numbers, which are just the squares of one through 50. I know this is a contrived example, but what we're talking about here is the general patterns of how you use list comprehensions, right? This is just crash course. We just want to learn the basics. So we can also use functions as well. 
And this is going to be a super contrived example, but just to illustrate the point. So I got my list comprehension and notice this time I'm going to say 4x in my list. And this time I'm going to say if x is greater than 50, so 51 through 100. And then what I'm going to do over here is do something totally contrived, but just to illustrate that you can use functions here, <laughs> I'm going to change each one of the values into a float. So what I'm going to do here is go through every value in my list. If x is greater than 50, so 51 through 100, change it into a float, add that to a brand new list, which I'm going to assign to new list. And I can do print new list again and run that. And you can see here, sure enough, <laughs> it's completely silly, but just goes to show that you can use functions, you can use classes, that sort of thing. And that is the basics of list comprehensions. List comprehensions are typically used in analytics with Python in very specific scenarios. For example, if you're doing text analytics with the natural language toolkit in Python, you use a list comprehensions all the time. But more generally, when you're using entire data frames and you're doing machine learning or cluster analysis or something like that, you typically don't use list comprehensions as much. However, they are useful to know, which is why I'm covering them in this crash course. So once again, make sure that you save your notebook if you're following along. Be sure to shut down the notebook. Be sure to shut down the Jupyter Notebook server when you're all done, so free up the resources on your computer. So the next video in this series, when it's ready, will show up here on the screen as a tile, and it will be all about how you write your own functions. So until next time, please stay healthy, and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.